going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're gonna build this cool little mortgage calculator with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna build this mortgage calculator. But before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee, it's just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna build this simple mortgage calculator. So we can enter some amount, some interest rate, whatever, a term, 30 years, click the payment, boom, wow, that's a big payment. Oh, 43%. Let's go 4.6%, calculate this payment, $3,500 a month. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Get Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Kinter videos in this series, almost 200 now, so check that out if you haven't seen it so far. So I've got our basic Kinter starter code that we've always got. And let's just start building out the GUI for this thing. And if I run this thing again, we can sort of stick it up here for reference if we want. But let's start out with a label frame. I'm gonna call it my label underscore frame. And this is gonna be a label frame. And we wanna put it in root and we want the text to equal mortgage calculator, all right? And then let's my label frame dot pack this guy onto the screen. Maybe we give it a pad Y of like 30 to push down the screen a little bit. So now inside of our label frame, we want another actual frame because I wanna use the grid system. I don't wanna pack these because we're gonna have labels on one side and entry boxes on the other side and the grid system makes that super easy. So I'm just gonna create a frame called my frame and that's gonna be a frame. We wanna put it inside of my label frame and then let's my frame dot pack this guy and give this a pad Y of like, I don't know, 20 or so, though I don't think it really matters all that much. All right, so now we need these three entry boxes. We need a label on this side and an entry box on that side. So I'm gonna call this one uh, amount label and that's gonna be a label. We wanna put it in my frame. We want the text to equal loan amount. And then let's also get amount underscore entry. And that's gonna be an entry box. We wanna put it in my frame. And let's give this a font of Helvetica and a font size of like 18. Okay, so we're gonna need three of these. So I'm just gonna do this three times here. And this one's gonna be the interest label, right? And this one is gonna be the term label, right? So here, let's say uh, interest rate. And then here, let's say term in years. So how long is the loan gonna be for, right? Okay, so let's define labels and entry boxes. Now down here, let's uh, put labels and entry boxes on the screen. So this is gonna be amount underscore label dot grid. And I'll just do it like this. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So this one's gonna be amount entry. So we can come through here and this is gonna be interest label and interest entry, bear with me, almost done. And this one is going to be term label and term entry. Okay, so we wanna use the grid system. We wanna put these in rows and columns. So this will be a row equals zero column equals zero. So let me just sort of copy this and slap this in each one of these. So this one will obviously be column one, column one, and column one. And this will be row one, row one, and row two, and row two. And let's put some space between this one. So in this middle one, let's give this a pad Y of like, what, say 20 or so, this should space them all apart. You get this, you know, 20 above this one and below this one, it automatically puts space in there. So, okay, that looks pretty good. Now, finally, we need a button, right? So let's go my underscore button. And this is gonna be a button. We wanna put this in my label frame. We want the text to say calculate payment. And we want the command to point to payment. We haven't created this function yet. We'll do that in just a second. But for now, we can my underscore button dot pack this guy. And let's give this a pad Y of like 20. Now, let's see. Notice we put this in my label frame and not my frame, because inside of my frame, we have to use the grid system. And we just wanna pack this in the middle here so we can put it inside this outside label frame, right? So that should be good. All right, so let's come up here. We also need to now create that function. So let's real quick just define payment. And from now, let's pass. Okay, so one more thing we need down here, a label. 
And you'll notice when I click this button over here with nothing in any of these boxes, it says, hey, you forgot to enter something above. So that's cool. Uh, but down here, let's put output label. And I'm going to call this payment underscore label because that's what we're trying to calculate the payment. And this is going to be a label. We want to put this in root. We want to put it outside of this whole box thing, right? So right down here. So we want to put it in root. We want the text to equal nothing for now. And let's give this a font of Helvetica with a size of like 18. And then let's payment underscore label dot pack this guy. Give it a pad Y of like 20 to really push it down the screen. Okay. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. We did a lot of stuff very quickly here. Let's just make sure that looks okay. I'm in my C GUI directory. Let's run Python mortgage.py. Oh, interest entry is not defined. So line 33, what did we do? Ah, forgot to change this to entry. All right, so that looks good. Give this another try, run it again. Okay, so now uh, we've still got some, it's really kind of smooshing up against the side of here. So let's give our frame some pad X. So let's head over here, there's our frame. Let's go pad X equals what, like 20. Maybe we'll give this 10. Yeah, that's probably good. So let's save this and run it, make sure that looks okay. Okay, looking better. Okay, so we can get rid of that guy. So now we need to, we need something to happen when we click this button. So now we're getting to the good stuff. Come up here. And the first thing we want to do is make sure we've actually entered things into our boxes. So let's go if and let's go amount that entry dot get and interest entry dot get we're getting the stuff and term underscore entry dot get. So if there is stuff in all those things, we want to do something else. We want to put out a little message in our label. So here's our label. We can come up here and we can go dot config and set the text equal to, hey, you forgot to enter something. Dot, dot, dot. So let's save this and run it just to make sure that works. So we don't enter something, boom, hey, you forgot to enter something, dot, dot, dot. All right, that looks good. So now inside of here, we need to calculate some stuff. So let's set years, let's create a variable called years, and this is gonna be an integer of our term. So let's go uh, term underscore entry dot get. And I'm gonna turn this into a variable just because we, we need to make sure it's an integer and I'd rather work with years if, instead of having to type this whole thing out in a calculation later on. So now, when you're dealing with mortgages, you're not really dealing with years, you're dealing with months. So we need to find out how many months are in our term. How many, you know, if it's 30 years, how many months is that? So let's create a variable called months, and this is just gonna equal years times 12, okay? So now let's find the rate, right? The rate is gonna be a float of whatever interest rate we put right here. So we could just copy this, make sure that turn this into a float, Right, so a float is a decimal number. Now we can do math stuff to it. Now let's create a variable called loan. And this is gonna be an integer of our amount entry. Okay, so basically right here, we're just taking all the stuff we entered into the boxes and converting them into numbers and assigning them to variables. So let's uh, convert entry boxes to numbers, right? Now we wanna actually calculate the loan. Right, so the first thing we need to do is get the monthly interest rate, right? Again, with loans, you're not dealing with a year. So if your interest rate is 3.5, that's for the year. We need to divide that by 12 to get the monthly interest rate. That's just how you sort of calculate these things. So this is gonna be, let's create a variable called monthly rate. And let's set that equal to our rate, which is you know what we entered into the box, divided by 100, and then divide that by 12. So we're changing it from 3.5 to 0 0.035, right? We're just converting it into a decimal number and then dividing that by 12 because there's 12 months in a year, right? Now let's get our payment. So our payment, this is what our monthly payment is gonna be. It's just gonna be the monthly rate divided by, and then here we're just gonna do some calculations, one minus and then one plus the monthly underscore rate raised to the power, that's that double multiplication sign of negative months uh, boom, boom, times the loan. All right, so we've got one too many somewhere here. There we go. 
Okay, so looking at this again, let me just put it all on one line here, almost, all right? It's the monthly rate divided by one minus one plus the monthly rate raised to the power of negative months all times the loan. So I'll put this code up on GitHub so you could just copy this line. And I'm not gonna go through here and talk about why these are all these things. I literally took a finance class in college that took about a month to explain loan amortization. So we're not gonna go through this math, but that's the actual calculation that you'll need to make. So now we can just output payment to the screen. And we know that that's the payment underscore label dot config. And we can set the text equal to, and let's make an F string out of this. And let's say your monthly payment is that payment, which is this guy right here. And if we wanna get cute, we can put a dollar sign in front of it. Now, we're not quite done with this because we need to make this look pretty and I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So let's save this and run it, see if this works. So let's say we want 500,000, our interest rate is 3.6%, and we wanna do it for 30 years. So that's gonna be $2,273.23. And you'll notice this number is very long, and there's no commas in here, so we wanna play around with this and make it look nice. So we can do that. Super easy to format numbers with Python. Let's format payment. And I'm just gonna set payment equal to, and let's create an F string, and this is just gonna be our payment. And then we can do this formatting with a semicolon, a comma, that will put commas in every thousand characters, right? And then dot two F, that will say, hey, take two decimal spaces and then round and only return that. So let's go ahead and save this, run this guy again, see if that worked. So now let's say we want 600,000 at 4.2% for 30 years. Our payment every month is gonna be $2,934.10, nicely formatted and very cool. If we remove something, oops, hey, you forgot to enter something. Let's say we want a 15 year loan. How's that? Oh, that's gonna be almost $5,500 a month. So really easy, just a little bit of funny math that we you can copy and paste, you don't really need to understand. But other than that, there's not much to this and now you don't have to run over to Google and search for a mortgage calculator, there you go. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.